Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Prog Report podcast interview. This is Roy. My guest on this episode is Big Rec frontman and founder Ian Thornley. They have a new EP out called Pages, which is out now. We got to talk about the new EP, everything going on with the band, and a whole lot more. But before we get started, just a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on progreport.com and on all our socials. And now my chat with Ian Thornley of Big Rec. How's it going? Good, new. Doing well. Good to uh, good to see you. Good to have you back on. Um, I feel like I'm always. I feel like it hadn't been that long since I spoke to you last on this uh, on this channel. But um, because your music is, you're putting out so much music all the time. But really, the last the last time was for the Ghost record, which is going back almost ten years now, which is crazy. Uh, a bit, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, it's good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I did get a chance to see you at the, it was at the Gramercy New York, maybe for the, uh, what was the album that came out? Was it Gray Street? Might've been that record. I'm not sure. One of yeah. one of the other ones, but, um, yeah. phenomenal show, of course, haven't been able to catch the band, uh, of late on this run, but I mean, you guys are just kicking ass. I see the videos. I see all the stuff going on, um, uh, around North America and stuff. How's that been going for you so far? Um, <clears throat> You're talking the tour in general? Yeah, yeah. It's been a it's been a it's been a shaky one, to be oh, honest. Really? Uh, yeah. Like uh I mean we canned our manager right before we left for tour. Um and we have a new guy who stepped in, has been phenomenal. Um and that I guess there's just, you know, there's a lot of loose ends and stuff that things that I wouldn't understand. And just from that aspect alone, it's been a little you know, every day's got it. There's a new little hiccup, but it's like it's quickly dealt with, and we have the best crew going. So everything on that end that could be a potential pitfall is is being dealt with quickly and easily. But yeah. then there are things that you that you'd never expect, like having a bus fire. We had another one of those. Um, wow. <laughs> in Montreal, yeah, and and so in the states we were sorry in canada we were running two buses and then when we cross over the states we go down to one bus um and so there's 12 of us on one bus and of course the trailer blew out an axle the other night yeah it's just it's never off yeah you're you weren't kidding sorry and those, those yeah, i mean everybody's taking it in stride because it, it's really no one's fault and there's no uh right you know Things that are that are someone's fault. There's usually a, a, a finger pointed in the discussion had, or um, you know, it's dealt with in, in the way it should be dealt with, like 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 adults. But there there are those things that um, no one can control. <laughs> so you just do it and taking it in stride. Um, and not, not to mention, I started the tour sick, which you, for any singer that's a drag. Um, it's come, it's coming around now. <clears throat> it's usually about for me if i'm singing while i'm sick even once i've once i've um kicked the cold or whatever there's still another like 10 days or so of just like <clears throat> just constantly sure. you know and every time you get on stage it's like what's going to happen so it's about first couple of songs are always a little dicey and then and then you know things start moving um as they should so it's it's been it's been great man and, and i've said it in, in other interviews on this run it's like at the end of the day the the hundred or so minutes that we're on stage are really all that, that matters. Um, and we've been kicking ass for that. So, you know, right. I, yeah. At least that's going good, <laughs> but yeah, tour, tour yeah. life is rough. Tour life is rough for, I hear it is like this all the time. Tour in Canada in the winter is, is, is nobody's idea of a good time. You know? yeah, right. So. Uh, so uh, I definitely want to talk about the, the new EP that just came out pages um, I mean, I think I've said I, I'm a huge fan of what you guys do, going back to the first record, and uh, was thrilled when you guys came back, and, and the Ghost record may be one of my favorite records of all time at this point. Hey, um, me too. And uh, But the new stuff is just continuing to, to take things up another level, and I think that's what I find the most exciting about what you put out. It's never the same. It's never the same record. It's never the same batch of songs, and... Uh, this new EP, uh, which uh, has six songs on it, again, it features some new things. It sounds a little proggy at times. Almost, you know, there's a little yeah. Genesis vibes in there, things like that yeah. that I hear, which is really cool. So it, talk about talk about that and, and what you tried to go for with this one. Um, I, I, there was no... Um, 
there was no sort of mission statement or goal in mind when when I started sort of writing or um, even putting stuff together. Um, yeah, the, a lot of it, and and even the stuff that's you know, I'm I'm always listening to a lot of Genesis, so that that hasn't changed. Um, I maybe I I I flow in and out of different Genesis eras, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I, and I I think on any given record you can hear where I'll I'll you know sort of lean on a uh, an acoustic trick of the tail vibe, or well I'll lean on a you know something from Lamb or or you know even the later stuff, and I've and I've definitely Abacab was one of the first ones that my brother and I got into as kids on our own. Like we got into that record when we were living on Gladstone. I can remember specifically like um, a couple of those tunes, "Keep It Dark" and 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 yeah, and Abacab. And there was some of those tunes that just really dug their way into my brother and I, and we would put that on, or at least ask to have it put on specifically. But I know that there was "Wind and Weathering" and there was "Trick of the Tail" that was just sort of on as we were kids. So that music sort of you know. It gets in there anyway. And then, of course, as I became a teenager, I started exploring all through the Genesis stuff. But I mean, and, and you know, it's it's all the usual suspects, again, with something that I'm going to do. Um, but I mean, there's so much music that that is so great and has been, been so impactful and left such, well, a, left such a mark on me that, uh, shit, that I, I, uh, I can kind of like, um see like within Fairlight, for instance, the first tune, it was just an experiment. Yeah, that's how it started anyway. It was an experiment. And it was sort of I was sort of thinking like of a San Jacinto, a Peter Gabriel song. Like I was thinking of if you had a, a loop, um, or even in, in in this case, two loops, um, that were in completely different time signatures, and it would and it would take them a really long time to come around and meet up at the same point again almost to the point where they don't stop and they won't go anywhere. They keep repeating, but um, they can almost become a drone, you know, like when somebody yeah. has like a constant tone and then you're changing in and around it, just something that a lot of people do. Um, but I like the idea of those things becoming such a static part of the new normal of this song that the only time you really notice is when they take them away. Um, cause we do take them away for a couple of moments here and there. Right. Um, and, and initially that song didn't have lyrics on it. It was just sort of like this cinematic arcing thing that, um, I just kind of sent out. I think I tucked it in behind a, a couple of bangers, you know, <laughs> like that. Then music I got to the, to the guys in the band and, and to, to rats and to Nick, um, and Nick came back and was like, "You need to put, you need to put some, some vocals on that." I was like, "Really? You dig it?" Because then he got it, you know. He um, he got what where I was coming from, uh, and that's you know, I I sometimes do that because I know sometimes they fall flat too. Like I'll have an idea, I'm like, "Nick's gonna love this," and I, and I'll sh I'll send it to him in in a, um in sketch form, and sometimes it'll be like, "Yeah, it's not really doing it for me." I'll be like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> But uh, but sometimes it's like, okay, well, this is strong. There's something here. Um, sorry, I'm rambling a lot. I'm still, no, I, they it, don't have no. That song tea. is that song is amazing and uh, has such a cool groove to it within this sort of rock proggy structure, which I think mm -hmm. is unique. That's what I, I I think that you're able to do with a lot of songs too. Yeah, I think there's. A, I mean, I can even hear. I think like when the when Seku comes in, when Seku and Dave come in, like the rhythm section comes in, like whatever it is, two minutes into the tune or yeah. however long that intro is, um, I I hear I hear tears for fears. Like I, I, there's a, you know that. I, yeah, that's yeah, not far not off 80. at all. You're right. Yeah, that's great, and should be, it's all right for the picking. You know, I mean, it's there, um, and if it's ingrained in you somehow, and I think a lot of that music is in us. Um, and it's great music, you know. I, I think there's a lot of stuff that gets a bad rap because of the era that it's from, um, and I, I just kind of think that's unfair, you know. But whatever, I, you know. 
Well, I also right. love on we we're talking about. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Abacab, uh, because that that song uh, "Summer Long" had mm -hmm. total Abacab yeah. vibes for me, and that and that snare sound, right? That's yeah. right there from Phil Collins kind of yep. snare sound. I mean, yeah. So how does a song like that start? Do you work on on sort of the music, and that snare comes along and then evolves, or the snare is kind of yeah. after the fact on that one? It, getting them getting the proper gated drum sound it's just like it's like been a hobby of mine for a long time and i've messed around with doing gated reverbs which is in my opinion the wrong way to do it it's still a good sound sound and a viable sound but that's what to me just sounds an instant that 80s um sort of processed thing whereas the, the the real the real one is just like over compressing a room mic and then gating that sound. So you actually have to be very careful with the part. Mm. Uh, the tempo has to be um, like, you'll adjust the gate, like how long you're going to cut the note off to whatever the tempo of the song is. So even the parts that you play, or if you're going to go into a fill, you have to, you have to be sort of cognizant of what things are opening and closing. Okay. Um, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I, but with summer long, I, I, th that was just some, um, chords over a pedal tone again that 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 i just got lost in one day and i was like oh there's something here um and then just i just kind of to a click track the whole song kind of came out pretty quickly the the and you can probably hear it the bridge came after like i was like okay this bridge i want to be a left turn into you know yeah. um but yeah and i still remember um writing that and then saying this is the perfect thing to have some synths and to have some some gated drums in and then i quickly went about building that and then just sort of took a, a video with my phone of the of the song and sent it sent it to i sent it to seku because i thought seku was a big level 42 fan and i was like dude he's gonna love this because these changes sound like level 42 changes yeah. <laughs> and i still We've talked about that too. Love, like, love that band too. That's a great band. This is a couple years ago, because um, Summerlong has been around. I've been sort of building it for a while, but the initial seed of the idea. I remember sending a video to Sacred. I was like, "This is from Andy Level Forty Two. He's like, "Yeah, man, that's killer." <laughs> um, and then after we recorded the song, it, it quickly became his favorite. And I was like, "Do you remember when I sent you that video of it? Sounds like Level Forty Two. He was like, "Holy shit! Yes, you did." <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, and and. From there, it's just like all of the others. It just you kind of have to get out of your own way and, and listen to what's happening and, and um, let the song tell you what it wants or what it needs. And then you go digging through your own trick bag to figure out how to how to um, how to feed the song, you know. So uh, one more song on that I want to talk to you about. And, and I like how you're referencing things. So I'm curious where where this one was for you. But the last song, Bird of Paradise, which yeah. is also a real kind of weird song with a whole bunch of parts and. And uh, kind of has this, I don't know, it goes for, I guess I keep going the 80s because it's the only thing I can think of, but yeah. it has that kind of synth sound again in the beginning, but then mm -hmm. it doesn't stay there, completely goes different. So where'd that one develop from? I'm curious. Um, I That song, the, the, some of the guitar riffs have been around for a while, like in, in this sort of mid mid section of it, like the the sort of slower part, the rain song part as we were, we were calling it. Okay. Uh, but some of those sort of Zeppi um, riffs or passages, they've been bouncing around for a while and just like, they'll find a home one day. They'll find a home one day. And then it was just, it all happened in one day. And so that, that this day was that day that they found a home and I sort of put them all together. Um, and then was like, okay, what if at the end of this, we go into this, we're going to change the tempo and we're going to go into a synthy thing um and so i did all that and it, so it started with the the very lush sort of acoustic parts and then went into the slightly more aggressive um more up-tempo and, and 80s thing if you will at the end um and i didn't have any lyric for it so i was just sort of scatting over it <clears throat> but i knew where the melodies in and around where the melodies were going to sit um and I was like, okay, this is weird, but I'm gonna send it out anyway. I'll send it to the send it to the guys, and and I got like a what just happened, you know? I got a lot of, <laughs> but like I love every part, but it, it feels like these parts shouldn't be together, and every part just sounds like it just sounds so 
legit and authentic like it's from uh you know but I, is it a song i don't know and then i and then when i heard back from nick he's like fucking love it take the simpy part and put that at the beginning too right like huh i didn't even think of that and then as soon as i did that it was the whole song sat you know what i mean it didn't sound like this abstract weird so before well, the uh, the first part you heard the synth part was just towards the back end yeah like okay. on, the, on the original demo like right. when I, my first demo the synth part was only in the outro it was a, it was a left turn outro um but yeah once he said that you know i had to move the whole song over change the tempo at the beginning of the song so i could take the outro and add some of that to the beginning and then change the tempo back it, it was a bit of a mathematical i'm not a really a, a rock and roll typist or computer guy as you can tell like but is that um, fun for you sort of working music oh, yeah, yeah. like that that sounds no, like it, it would be a lot of fun yeah it really is it really is and it's uh it's yeah it's, it's exciting to get excited about music it just um especially when it's a song like that i'm a little more uh, just send it out it was like a friday i did it on a friday and i like sort of friday at four or five in the afternoon before i went and picked up my son and just sort of slid it out to the guys and just sort of like eh, you know i'm not sure if i want to hear back like you know because it was kind of weird and um but yeah when you when you hear back and, and somebody's excited and and just has more ideas and and their imagination is going and their creativity is flowing with it that then then it's that yeah i mean that sort of reignites a flame you know yeah so you've had this approach for the last few years uh of putting out eps the these series of mm -hmm. EPs. you had the the 7.1 2 and 3 and now this is a new series have you has have you found that to be a better way for you guys to work and and well or, or what was the reasoning behind that i mean i guess you can maybe assume it's sort of the new era of how you do music these days what what who knows what works right but I mean, was that sort of the idea, and and have you enjoyed it this way? Um, well, it's two parts. It is. It hasn't. It hasn't changed the way we work. You know, like we're not going in and cutting five or six songs. Like for the for the sevens, we cut fifteen songs, and for this one, we cut eighteen songs. Hmm. The only difference between the two being that we mix all fifteen at the same time in the last one. And this time, we only mixed it for six. Uh, so there are twelve songs in the can. They've already been recorded and they're done they just need to be mixed and mastered um so for us it doesn't really change on that side of it i think on the other side like i and i still i still i'm still waiting to see the results of the experiment you know because the first time around we we ran into covid so and i kind of feel like okay well the rhythm of our idea was thrown off by not being able to tour for two fucking years or whatever it was and and so the the releases didn't get you know the same amount of juice that i thought they perhaps would have um but my thinking on that my my idea initially came from maybe the proggier things that we do are usually down the dusty end of the record right like if we do a 12 or 15 song album the 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 stuff where we stretch out and the stuff where we're taking a little more chances and maybe asking a little more of the listener that's going to be towards the end of the record Whereas the more um, accessible or digestible stuff will be up front. And I've always thought of us as the kind of band that really excels in, in that stuff. And in the longer, you know, the the what if, if kind of songs, you know? Sure. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I, I figured if we, if we were putting it out in, in um, smaller sort of bite sized portions, then, 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 people are just going to put on its own. It's not a real commitment, you know, you're just putting something in and listening to it. And, and you'll, you'll hear, you'll hear a bit of everything that we like to do because I love the perfect pop song. I, I adore it. Um, as much as I love the other stuff. Um, and I work just as hard on all of them, trying to, trying to um, grow and progress and get, make each one of those versions of songs on an album better than the one before. Uh, so I, I just kind of figured it's 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 asking less of the listener. And I think, you know, attention spans being what they are and all that. It's um, and I fall into that category, too, um, of like it just OK, well, that's, a, you know, it's a brand new set of music that I've never heard before. It's untested. So, 
you know, am I going to commit the next hour and a half to this or, or is it, Oh, it's, you know, however long it is, just pop it in and see if I like it. <laughs> so it's, that a was a tough one. It's a tough one to know what you're right. I mean, people's attention spans, you, you don't, you know, if, can you give anybody a 15 song album anymore? It's a, it's who knows. Yeah. It's it's a weird... At the same time, I still, I still have a lot of affection for that. The old way of doing it. Of oh course. no. Yeah, I do personally as well. You know, I, uh, um, I'm also, yeah, I, it's, it's the wild west, you know, there's no rules anymore. So like, just fucking try something and see if it works. Yeah. Um, because to me, it's still like these first six are still part of that group of songs that we recorded and that were written over a period of time. Um, you know, some of them written very quickly. Some of them took took a lot longer. But um, yeah, my memory of it is going in and smashing out 18 songs in 12 days or whatever, 14 days. So what was the process of picking these six Oh, I used they were the first ones mixed, or or did you choose them to be the first ones mixed? Um, yeah, yeah, the latter. I it was, uh, yeah, well, there was a list, you know, of which songs. Like, what are we gonna, what are we gonna come out with first? I I already knew that In Fairlight was gonna be an, an opener of some kind, um, whether on this EP or, or the ones that are coming. Um, but yeah, I think like at the end, if we put the whole thing together as one project called Pages, like if there's Pages 1, Pages 2, Pages 3, and then there's there's just Pages at the end, the whole thing will open within fair light. And I think that that's a good way to sort of cleanse the palate for the, for what's to come. And, and I think, uh, you know, there was, a, there was some back and forth. There was some conversations about, because we have some, there's some stuff waiting that I'm like, I'm a little self-conscious about. But I'm still kind of excited about because I know we're going to get shredded. <laughs> I know we're going <laughs> to the fucking comment section is going to light up. And I'm oh, like, I can't a, wait. Well, I, it's I mean, I think, really of a, but derivative of something that you would never expect that you just would never expect. Big Rec would 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 go there. And we went there and we committed. We dug our heels in. We planted the land. We stopped the landing. Um but I'm excited for people to hear it and hopefully they get a chuckle out of it the way that we do. Cause I just think it's funny, but me having said that I was like, well, that's gotta be it. That's, that, that's the first single. Uh, and when people hear this song, eventually they'll know what I'm talking about here. But um, yeah, there's a, uh, it was, yeah, there was, a, there was some, some discussion back and forth and some, you know, cause people have certain favorites of, but it, yeah. It was pretty quick. It was like somebody made a suggestion. It was like, how about this? How about that? How about this? Okay, that looks good. Okay, do it. And then you start to think, oh, shit. Did we just use all the goodies of the first one? And then I <laughs> right. just go back and start listening to the other 12. And I'm like, no, we're golden. <laughs> we're in great shape. <laughs> yeah. So when, do you, at, uh, when do you anticipate those those coming out? I don't know. I'm, I'm itching. Like, I'm chopping it to bit. Because I probably come from probably because I come from the old school where I'm, I'm like, I just, you know, I've, I've done, done all this work. I want people to hear it. You know, I want, I want to know what people think, you know, do they like me? And still that, you know, that still happens. I'm like, um, so I, I don't know as soon as we can, I guess, I think we're, we're scheduled to go in in January rats and I are going to go and we're just going to bang out. I think all 12 uh, and mix them, which shouldn't take that long. It's like, you know, we, we tend to set things up to be mixed as we're recording, you know? Nice. Uh, I want to ask you about when you guys reformed and, and, and put out uh, Albatross and then started to follow up. Did you, at that time, were you thinking, I'll just get big rec back together, make a couple of records and then I'll be off to my next thing, you know, or did you anticipate it being this? Cause it, in the weirdest way, I feel like it's the band's, grown in this crazy way over the last yeah. 15 years that I don't think anybody saw coming and it's been amazing. Yes, I certainly didn't. I, I, we had gone in to record a Thornley record. Um, my intention was, was focused on the music, not what we were going to call it, but I, I, because I just gotten out of my previous record deal, which was sort of, I felt like there was pressure from that label to sort of button things down and, and, you know, have things not 
like guitar solos were passe and don't use big words or interesting chord changes, fucking odd time signatures, never. Right. Um, and that's just like, you know, that's not really my resting place. So I think um, once it was going to, it was going to come out on Anthem and that was also our management. And they didn't even really ask to hear demos. They were just like, just put Ian in the studio and set him free. And I was just really excited about that aspect of it you know so i was like well this music's going to start to sound like how nick and i wanted the last record to sound you know because <laughs> now we're allowed to do it we're not um butting heads or, or bucking up against some wall of like that's not a single or whatever um so yeah it, it was like we got nick on board as sort of an executive producer um and and we're working with rats so yeah i was thinking about that and then as we started to get towards the finish line of recording that record, that's, you know, we we're looking up at the track sheet on the wall. Um, and I, I think it was Nick who said it first and was like, you know what, this is a big rec album. We need to call this big. And Brian was back in the band at that point. And, you know, him and I had sort of rekindled our friendship. And um, yeah, so it, I, I was like, okay, I see it. But but Brian and I initially balked. We both we both were like, no hell no, no that's not right. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like I think the the assistant engineer went and got a big rec logo and printed it off and then stuck it on the track sheet. Like as we're getting down to like vocals and percussion and shit, you know, like we're down the the end of the record here. And I, and I think over the last little while, or so yeah, towards the end of it, I, it just you know looking up at it just sort of you know took a minute to settle in but then i was like all right you know why not like i'm pretty sure anybody that knows thornley came from big rack or big rack came from thorn it's kind of you know all in-house anyway yeah. uh, for the most part you know notwithstanding the the former members and stuff like that but there have been many members of thornley who have come and gone it's sort of a you know it's like a yeah i guess just an extension maybe of of there, there, I mean there is a through line um you know Seku was in Thornley and then he wasn't in Thornley and then he was in Big Rack you know there's a you know Dave McMillan has been there since since the Thornley days so you know um but yeah I think um I never I yeah I never really thought about it to be honest yeah uh, it's just kind of like, okay, I got to write some songs. Let's see what I've got. And I start digging through my ideas. And then it's, okay, we got to go on tour. Let's get, let's get into rehearsal. What are we going to build here? Um, yeah, I'm sort of always just focused on whatever is at hand. I, I, I don't, I'm not a big, I'm not great at the sort of like, what's your 10 year goal? Like, dude, I, you know. You're right. All of a sudden, like, and all of a sudden you're really here honest, and it's like so many albums it, later. It's to not have tea in the hotel room. Like, I want a cup of coffee, please. Like, that's my 10 <laughs> right now you know i'm goldfish that way i don't have a lot of uh, not a great multitasker i also noticed on the current tour I, maybe i'm wrong but uh, I, it seems you've been playing a lot of uh pleasure and the greed songs on this on this run is that a few songs from that album is that right or uh i guess inhale is there um i think it's still there i that's one that we've been talking about yeah maybe I throw, I throw in a little clip of mistake just because, you know, it's in the tuning and I did it one night and, you know, when we discussed it, it was like, yeah, let's just do like a verse and a chorus, you know. Yeah, because that was sort but, of a, a overlooked album, I think, a little bit. And, and... Yeah, you know, and, and the more I think about it, and this has come up, um, these conversations have come up recently, is that I think that a lot of our records are overlooked. Because <laughs> I like, I went back and listened to Gray Street, holy there's some great music on this record. Granted, it's a darker album. Like it's 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 a divorce record, really. But it but you know that doesn't that doesn't take away from musically what what I think we achieved there. I I, I oh I love that record. Speedy recovery. A, Speedy recovery is one of the greatest songs I think you guys yeah, have done. But no, and and to your point, I, yeah, I think I think pleasure and agreed. I I see why. In, in many respects, I think it's, I don't think it's as focused a record as it could have been. Um, yeah. And I have some weird memories of that time as well. Like just like, so you know, yeah. stuff I get into, but, but it's just, um, 
Yeah, I think I think musically there's some there's some really strong moments on on that record that that it's a shame didn't didn't get more uh, more of a spotlight. But you know, it's not even a live and learn. It's like you know, it's, sometimes it doesn't happen. It's not like we're not aiming for the bullseye. You know? Right. We're trying to do great work. It's not like I'm trying to fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> so. What uh, do you have a song that you think represents the band? If you were to to show somebody what big wreck is that's never heard what do you because it's so i mean the spectrum of what you guys are so so much i don't know man i don't know if you could pick one i think you'd have, that would depend on on the listener like who well, you're what playing you think they like yeah exactly like what you think you could even do that with you could even do that with this, this six song ep you know yeah you could there's, there's a lot of different flavors in there and you know, I think that White Lies song, to me, that sounds like a big rack song. Like, like if you just harken back to the first record, that's we were doing a lot of that sort of, um, you know, open strings ringing out and, you know, like um, sort of simpler chord changes, um, but sort of wrapped up in a slightly different way. Um, but I mean, I, I was never stacking, I was never stacking harmony. Well, no, that's not true. I did stack harmonies in the in the first record but i i yeah so I, I i mean that sounds like big rack but honestly at this point yeah like i'm going back to my first answer and i think you know, that's listener dependent you know and yeah just know the people that you're going to play it for <laughs> one you of know. my favorite songs from you have to be you have to be qualified to be initiated you know what i mean yeah well i was i i think i'd almost go ghosts always i just think that's maybe yeah. the, one of my favorite songs of all time i, I it's just so perfect but um Thanks, uh off the seven one of the 7.1 EPs, i forget which one it's on but bombs away um mm -hmm. is another one that i think over the yeah. last few years has just been the heaviness of that one is a real high mark. I mean, it yeah. the ending is intense. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's just and again, that's um to me, it's all music and it's all right for the picking. Um, and it's you know the, a lot of those ideas where it's a, where it's an if it's an outro thing, or if it's a midsection thing, or the things where you take a classic song format and just sort of put it on its on its ear for a second. Um, a lot of those are by design, um, and a lot of them are just suggestions in the room, you know, like the six eight thing that that Seku jumps into at the end, which Dave immediately jumped on, at the end of In Fairlight, where all of a sudden the time signature switches, but the like the 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 loops are still in time, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he just switches the. That was just that was just Seku trying to trying to get a rise out of me during a take like I said, he just jumped on it and i was like <laughs> and i just saw him smile and he was like yeah and i was like that's it we're doing it and then it was like <laughs> we went into this sort of 12 8 shuffly thing um but yeah i, I uh and it's you know i can i can think of moments on every record where there's somebody just saying you know what about like somebody throws an idea out there and then everybody jumps in uh, and says, okay, okay. And then it's a very quick process of sort of musical tennis that, that boom, 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 boom. And then we have this thing We go rehearse it. Okay. Let's cut it. Um, it's fun. That's cool. Yeah. But it, yeah, some, some of it, some of it, the demos show up that way. And some of it, it's like, you know, the demo is just a verse and a chorus and, you know, let's just turn this into something. I think those those are the moments that uh, that I think really make a band like us a band like us. Because I don't think there's a lot of bands that can that can pull that shit off, you know. Um, no, I I think you guys are awesome, man. I, I I've said it. I, anybody that doesn't know about you guys, I'm I'm listen to this and I'm sending you this. You got to check out this. I'm a big fan. I'm a big person that's pushing you guys onto people. Uh, Thanks, man. Th thank Thank you for continuing to make music, man. I think it's just awesome. It's some of my favorite stuff every year to get to get six new songs just showing up is just hey Christmas. It's all right fantastic. On. It's all so, I know. Um, how to do. Yeah, man. Keep, keep it man. going, and uh, I hope the tour eases up on you. You know, <laughs> gets a little, oh, gets a little better. It has to. It's, yeah. it's going to be warmer. 
you know i'm gonna try to find like somewhere to sit and just sit in the sun and drink a hot coffee like i, I you know I, I'm, I'm a simple guy i don't need a lot <laughs> sunshine would be great you know we had some sunshine yesterday while we were waiting for the axle to be fixed thank god we didn't have a gig so when you get to are you got to be you're heading to california right or have you already been we're, yeah we're oh, we're okay. in oakland yeah okay yeah. there you go so so good I have my hotel room drinking some tea so a little bit nicer weather for you hopefully not coffee but it's you know <laughs> there's like a hundred starbucks probably around every corner i'm sure you can find something yeah no yeah yeah I get okay. all right man have a great day bye. i'll talk to you soon okay man be well thanks See ya. bye hey thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel follow us wherever you get your podcast check us out on all our socials and on progreport.com for all your news interviews reviews and more and we'll see you again real soon thanks